Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to the 4554 Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Eden, and we're back with another show. I told you guys, we're going to keep this going. I've missed you, and I can't wait to keep it moving. Um, Welcome to the, well, this will be episode 31, but technically this is the second episode of the new and improved 4554 Podcast. So I want to Thank everyone for tuning in. Thank everyone who has welcomed me back uh, into your cars, stereos, phones, and computers, and all of the devices. Um, just really quickly, I want to go over a couple things for the week. Um, if you guys have not already, please head over to Nick Eden on YouTube. You can hear the 4554 podcast there. But I have a daily show called Morning Cup of Merch. And it's just me. I do a, a drive every day. And I'm just sharing my thoughts on Merch by Amazon and the print-on-demand industry overall. Uh, Today, I actually did one about trademarks and a union for Merch by Amazon. I think it's pretty cool to check out. And like I said, it's just my thoughts. And I tell everybody all the time, I'm not a preferred merch seller. I don't have a relationship with Amazon or anything like that. You know, so I'm I'm going by my thoughts, my opinions, and my experiences. And, um, you know, hopefully you get some value out of it. That's always been my biggest thing is to make sure that I bring you value every time I step up to any type of microphone to bring you any type of content. So, like I said, if you could, please head on over to Nick Eden on YouTube, like, subscribe and uh, click that bell for notifications every time um, Morning Cup of Merch comes on or the 4554 podcast or any of the additional content that I put on the page. Someone did ask me if I was bringing back merch in a minute. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, probably not. Uh, because, I mean, realistically, merch in a minute was a quick update that I did three times a week about something going on in merch by Amazon. And, and to be completely honest with you, between Morning Cup of Merch and the 4554 podcast, I, it's just, it would be a stretch on what type of content to put on there. And to be completely honest with you, I've always had a strong belief. If I don't have any content that week, it's really no point in putting anything up. So that's my biggest thing. So, yeah, it looks like Merch in a Minute is probably going to be done, at least for right now. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know, down the line, I can do Merch in a Minute where I have some other people's do a, some other people do a video uh, about their experience and... Um, I don't know. Maybe that'll be, you know, something exciting. So uh, anyway, so I want to get right into this today because this has been something that's been going on for a long time in the online seller world. And it's hit merch, you know, within the last year or so. A lot of people are saying that they don't like the idea of someone selling a course on Merch by Amazon because the information is out there just for free. And from the aspect of the information being for free, I would 100% agree with them. If you want to do the work and look up the research yourself, you can find everything that's in those courses for free um, for the most part. Now, I haven't taken every course, so I can't speak to every course what is and is not different about each thing. One thing I can say is I've taken a paid course before Uh, It was on private label. The access and the information that I got, it was priceless. Uh, It was well worth it. I spent about 500 bucks on a course and it was very well worth it. That being said, because I have taken a course before and because I have seen people put together courses, um, I thought that I would put together a list of top three tips to look for when you're deciding on if you're going to purchase someone's course. Again, this is just my opinion. This is my experience. And hopefully it'll help someone. If you're on the fence about buying a course, um, no matter who or, or what entity is putting it on, then I would absolutely say, you know, if you take these three tips, uh, th- this will help you. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, search that person's name in the Facebook groups. Now, something very important about that. Don't 
put up a status within a group asking about that course or that person. Here's the reason why. While most people will give you an honest review if they've taken that course, a lot of people just like to complain. And what you don't want to happen is, and please excuse my language on this, you don't want a bitch session to come up on the page where people are just complaining because they're annoyed by the ads or they don't particularly agree with that person or particularly like that person, which is why I say search for their name. That way you can see, okay, are there other people within the group? And there are plenty of merch groups to go and look through. Are people talking about this person positively? Not just, hey, I like them. They're a great guy or gal. But the content that they put out. You can see that person's post if they have posted in those groups. And there's plenty of groups out there again. But. The main reason is you want to see, does this person contribute to the merch community? Because no one without contributing to the community can really say, okay, I'm the foremost expert on this. I'm the foremost expert on that because it's almost impossible to keep your finger on the pulse. And that's my opinion. Yes, that's not to say that someone who does not interact with the groups does not have anything of value to offer. What I am saying is I would be very leery of someone that does not have some type of social proof that shows, hey, this person is actually getting in there, providing value, giving feedback. I mean, it is a merch community. We all help each other out. I'm experienced in some other sellers, but I listen to everyone and I research for myself to validate whether or not what they're talking about is true. So search search the person's name in the Facebook groups. That would be the tip number one. Tip number two. Ask a more experienced merger privately. Very important to that, because, again, you don't want to cause a bitch session. So look into the groups and utilize these groups, guys. These groups are here for a reason. For for those of us who've been around a little bit longer, no, maybe the groups aren't quite what they used to be, but there's still a lot of value that can be derived from those groups. So I would look into one of the groups and find an experienced merger, someone who interacts and does provide value. And then I'd send them a message. Hey, listen, I'm reaching out to you, not because I necessarily want to get anything from you, but I just want your opinion. I'm thinking of taking a course by XYZ. Do you have any feedback on it? Anything you can help me with will be greatly appreciated. Now, I'm also a stark believer that if a person has not taken a course, then they should not speak to that specific course. Meaning if I have not consumed this person's product, I cannot say this person's product sucks. That's not fair. If you consume it and you feel like, okay, well, based on my experience, it wasn't good, then that's one thing. But it's another thing to say, oh, you shouldn't take that person's course and you have no base of reference. And anybody who's experienced and really wanting you to learn and grow on this platform would more than likely tell you, hey, you know, I can't make a decision for you. It would be my opinion that maybe you should try this research on your own first and then reassess whether you feel like you should take the course. And that's most of the guys. Most of the guys and gals in the merch community really are stand-up people, uh, especially a lot of the content creators. Now, not everybody would agree with me on that, and that's fine. That's your opinion. But the reality is, it's true. You know, most people are just stand-up guys and gals. And we're all learning on this platform. Even the most experienced sellers are still learning every day. So I I would seek out someone privately, again, not wanting to cause a stir in the group, and just get their opinion. Tip number three, and I told you guys this would be a short show. Look for any reviews online. This is the tricky part. Because uh, as I stated on today's Morning Cup of Merch, there is no Better Business Bureau. 
for merch or print on demand. There is no Yelp. There is no TripAdvisor. Um, there is no real system of checks and balances other than probably the Gumroad page if they're using Gumroad for their um, course. So I would start there. I would start and see where the course is. If it's somewhere like Teachable or Udemy or Gumroad, usually there's some type of rating that goes along with it. And you can go from there. Other than that, a simple Google search. But you've got to do your research. Uh, you, you really have to do your research on this. And, and I cannot stress that enough because if you're not doing your research, then realistically, you're not treating this like a real business. And it doesn't matter what course you take. It, it, it just doesn't. If you're not treating this like a real business, you can take all the courses in the world, but it won't matter at all because if you're not willing to research, you're not willing to put in the work. So that that's just my opinion on that. I would definitely try those three tips. That's really all I had today, guys. I just wanted to talk to you about that because that's something that's been on my mind for a while and, and I don't want to offer my opinion one way or another when I have not consumed products, but I do want you to be as best prepared as you can possibly be before you make a substantial investment into your print on demand business. But I do want to give you your free font of the week. Uh, now, I am not an affiliate of fontbundles.net. I just happen to really enjoy their platform. They're paid and free fonts. And so this week's font is Dankin Stripes. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. D-A-N-K-E-N Stripes. Uh, it's a rounded stripe font. Um, I've used this font for a lot of the shirts that I've done in the 80s and 90s niche. You know, just it kind of gives you that neon, you know, vintage kind of retro look. And so uh, it's, it's giving me a lot of creativity in that space. So Dankin Stripes is the free font of the week. Also, my podcast watch this week. As always, shout out to Merch Minds Podcast. Glenn and Young, they have been on fire lately with their content. They always are pretty good with their content, but they've really been on fire lately. So uh, shout out to Glenn and Young, uh, Merch Minds Podcast. Uh, also, Real Talk with RJ and Matt. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing that podcast this week. Uh, Lisa Irby, the Passive Shirt Prophet. I don't know if she's got a new one coming out. Uh, I've been watching a lot of her YouTube, uh, YouTube content lately, and I'm really impressed by a lot of the stuff that she's got going on um, and her podcast as well. I think she does it like maybe once or twice a month. So uh, those are my podcast watch for the week. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in. If you have not, please go ahead and subscribe. Head on over to Nick Eden on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. And remember this. You can make as much money as you want to in print on demand. But you have to press the go button. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.